Hey everyone, welcome to another Trimble Monitoring webinar. Uh, thank you all for attending and joining. So today is a really great topic where we're going to be talking about automated monitoring using geotechnical IoT devices. And I'm happy to have the, the World Sensing team join us today for this, this webinar. So the, the primary primary message today is about introducing the Trimble Monitoring Geotechnical Solution powered by world sensing. So we're going to get into that in, in this webinar. Next slide. All right. So today with me, I have a great list of presenters today. Um, myself, my name is Riley Smith, and I'm product marketing manager for Trimble Monitoring, and I'm based in the U.S. Ben, can you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. So my name is Ben. I am a project manager for Trimble Monitoring Solution. I am based in France. And uh, today I do a demonstration and I will present you our, syst our new system uh, from World Sensing. And uh, I hope you will enjoy it. Excellent. Juan. Hello. Yeah, my name is Juan. I am the head of the application engineering in World Sensing. And I have been involved in the product management and particularly in the log sensing wireless monitoring system uh, since more than 10 years. So, awesome. And Kelsey. Yeah, thank you. And then I'm Kelsey Kidd. I'm the business development manager of the US and I am based out of Denver for World Sensing. Excellent. Well, thanks everyone for joining. Really looking forward to this. So, just uh, uh, to to go over the agenda today before we dive into everything. So we're going to start by introducing World Sensing, and and Kelsey and Juan will go over the the company and the history, and and what where where they're they're currently active and and the technology behind the World Sensing brand. And then we're going to get into more about applications and project examples and where you would use geotechnical sensors uh, for automated monitoring. Followed by that, Ben's going to dive into what this new Trimble monitoring geotechnical portfolio looks like, what devices are involved, and what, how does it all work and tie together uh, with T4D and so forth. And, and the best way to do that is with the live demonstration, which we'll, we'll spend the majority of the second half of this webinar going over. And then of course, we'll end it off with some time for questions and next steps and resources. So stick around for that. Now, throughout the presentation, if you have any technical difficulties, you can't hear us or you can't see the presentation, please let us know. There's a little chat window which you can use to let us know if anything's wrong. You can also use that to ask any questions. So we'll, we'll answer questions throughout the presentation and we'll save some time at the end to, to answer those. So feel free to start, start typing and asking questions now. All right, I'll let Kelsey take it away from here. Great, thank you so much, Riley. Thanks everyone for joining. We're really excited about this partnership with Trimble. So I'm gonna start by giving you just a little bit of background about World Sensing. So World Sensing's goal is to help digitize critical infrastructure for a safer, more resilient world. Um, we were founded in 2008. We have 270 plus engineering partners worldwide. We're in 60 plus country. At countries and we're in we have a thousand plus monitoring networks deployed at this moment so we're really a front runner in the geotechnical monitoring through our iot based technology and connectivity management tools so some of the key industries that we work in um, include mining so we're in as i said 100 plus tailing stands and mines construction 200 plus major construction sites across the globe we work in rail on major rail projects projects and then also critical infrastructure as well. So we're really providing connectivity to monitor any kind of critical infrastructure in these really remote locations. So this is just to give you an idea of like where we're working. These are some of our key success stories. Juan's going to touch on specifics during his part of the presentation, but just to show you we're working in Brazil, Germany, obviously the US, um, Switzerland, China, just really global at this point. So looking at infrastructure monitoring, I wanted to compare the status quo with kind of the future and where we're all moving. We all are familiar with manual monitoring. The efficiency isn't great. You have infrequent data availability. It requires a lot of man hours. 
really human error comes in a lot there. I'm sure we've all seen those like handwritten logs that we're trying to transcribe and use that data in our analytical um, softwares, but very low capex, which seems interesting, but really high operating costs. And the safety is really low. A lot of these people are going out to these hazardous environments and the less we have people out there, the better, right? So we move more into a cable um, monitoring it's more frequent, it's still delayed for the data that you're getting, a really high capex, I mean, the including the cabling, it's just a really expensive cost up front, medium operating costs, and the safety is a little bit better because you're getting more information. But then really moving into the wireless uh, monitoring options, you've got real-time data, medium capex for investment, really low operating um, costs, and the safety is really high. You're getting this data, more regularly and it's more reliable and so you're able to make better data-driven decisions. So IoT remote monitoring business benefits, you know, you have really reliable data, as I mentioned. It's simplified, um, it's very scalable, it's really simple to add on, grow project, just add new equipment in as needed. It's really secure and then you have a competitive edge in bids moving forward. Really, you're gonna see those cost, cost savings pretty quickly. So some key features of the load sensing solution are our long range. So we can reach up to nine miles between our logger and our gateway, which is really incredible. That's with direct line of sight. Without, you're at around two miles, which is still really great. It can go through any sort of um, concrete, anything like that. So you won't have to worry about anything there. Really low power. So we have 10 years of unattended battery operation. I mean, so the only time you're sending people out there is to replace those batteries, which is really simple. And you won't have to do that for a long time. Most of this will outlive a lot of these projects that we're working on. So very quick and easy setup. So you configure the data loggers just by um, plugging in your mobile phone. It takes about five minutes and you're done. And then obviously a robust design. We know people are working in these really hazardous and harsh environments. So we are IP67 and IP68 certified. And then our compatibility. So one of the major benefits really of working with the load sensing solution is our compatibility with all of the different geotechnical sensors on the market today, environmental sensors, water level sensors. We really, um, it's really important for us to make sure that we're compatible with everything, everything so it can be really flexible for our clients. And then our connectivity management tool. This is um, more so our health check software. You're going to be integrating all of this information for your analytics into T4D, but on the connectivity management tool side, you're just able to see the connection to the gateway, the connection to the nodes. You can change the sampling frequency from there, but really you're going to get your analytics from T4D because that's not, we're, we're not looking to be an analytics company and Triple does it so well. So then just to look quickly at how how it works. Um, so you've got your wireless data loggers. They're connected to any kind of, as I said, geotechnical, environmental, water sensors that you have out in the field. Um, you configure the, the logger with the mobile app. So it really is, you just plug right into it, very simple. And from there, the data is transferred over our long range radio. So that's working on a sub gigahertz frequency. And so that's how we get our really far distance of nine miles. And um, it's really efficient and very low powered. So that's how we're able to power everything with our um, battery, the data loggers with our batteries. So that information goes to your gateway. The information is sent to our CMT edge, the connectivity management tool. And from there, we integrate into our third party software, which is T4D. And that also has all the information from the other Trimble devices all in one place. So from there, I will give it back to Ben, or over to Ben. All right, Ben, I will give you the presenter. Yeah, right. I'm here. Can you see me? Uh, nope, not so, at the moment. Okay, uh, show my screen. Can you see my screen? Uh, I'm seeing Google right now. Okay, cool. So, so I'm just going to Kelsey here. Yep. So yeah, so the application, sorry. I have only one screen because I'm outside for the real demo. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, presence. 
to. Okay, so I'm gonna present the, the application. So today uh, we have different uh, using of, um, of geotechnical monitoring. First of all is transportation and infrastructure. Uh, there is, uh, you can use tilt meter exactly like this. Uh, and uh, you have the two direction or orientation for this kind of device. And uh, be, you need also the, the slope and so the Z uh, displacement. And then you can get uh, a priest measurement. So you have this. Uh, there is also, you can use geotechnical sensor in building structure. For example, this was a mosque in Jakarta. Uh, they use bench of tilt meter and also some, some uh, IPI uh, on a, underground to measure the inclination uh, of the floor. And you can also use for dam. Dam, basically, you use piezometer to measure the level of the water. So you're able to, um, to, detect, uh, to detect if there is uh, overflowing or if there is uh, also with crack, crack meter, you can detect like if there is movement on a crack uh, on a dam. And you can use prism or GNSS, I think most of our customers use GNSS right now to have high frequency measurement on the dam. And you use PRISM also to have like uh, the global displacement of the dam during a project. And then there is landslide. Uh, for landslide, uh, it's possible to use tilt meter. Um, for tilt meter, uh, sometimes use uh, the user protect it like this. And uh, you can use also uh, PRISM to measure the Z displacement because this kind of tilt meters are not able to, to uh, monitor the settlement. So basically, this is why we try to, uh, we try to, uh, to introduce word sensing device because we have a perfect match. And basically, our customer right now, they don't just use uh, geotechnical, they also use survey. So I think it's a good option for us to have like a full package uh, for geotech monitoring and also survey. So here in the slide, I try to do the parallel to show where, we, where Trimble is right now with our Trimble device. Uh, so they are in a rail, of course, uh, to monitor the, the settlement of the track. And uh, they are in a building, we are in building stru and structure. For example, we monitor uh, deep excavation uh, we install prism and we are able to monitor the excavation wall. We are in dam and mining in, in South Africa. Uh, and uh, for example, here it's a dam and uh, we already monitor the dam and uh, structure and natural hazard, uh, as you can see with GNSS. So, so it's a perfect match. So why, for example, I just want to talk about, uh, about the, the rail. Um, so we have three different movement in a rail. And uh, I can show you how our solution are complementary. For example, in rail, you have three types of movement. You have cant, twist. So for cant and twist, you are able to monitor with tilt meter, but you are not able to monitor the ver vertical alignment. For this, you need prism. So this is why you have to combine the two methods using tilt meter and also prism on a rail. Uh, landslide monitoring. For landslide monitoring, uh, it's the same. Most of our customers, they use tilt meter, but they also use uh, some press because you don't have the settlement. So you have, if for example, you have all the slope like display, uh, you have a, a vertical displacement, you are not able to detect. So this is why bus monitoring makes sense in this case. Uh, also, what we can say is basically when you have 15 points, uh, it's cheaper to use uh, tilt meter only if you just if you don't mind about the the settlement. But if you have more than fifty points, uh, you should use total station. Um, so deep excavation. Uh, I think I introduced uh, this at the beginning. For deep excavation, uh, here is a very good example. For example, is in the city. So you can install your total station on the roof and you're able to monitor uh, your excavation. And, but you need also to monitor the load on the beam. For this, you can use load cell, and the load cell or can be directly connected to a data logger. And then you are able to know what is the pressure on your beam uh, directly on T4D. And you also have the displacement with your, of your total station uh, and of your target. 
uh, directly on T4D. You have your crack meter installed on the wall. Uh, you also have your piezometer here because there is water. And uh, you have your IPI here. Uh, on, the, on the top of this roof, you can you also install your gateway. And your gateway is here to collect all your data from your site from the different sensor. Uh, I just want to add something uh, because I think this is a very common question from our customer. You can also install uh, the, gate, the data logger in a basement and you will be able to collect the data from the gateway because uh, the, the, the data logger uses LoRa technology and it's possible to even get, uh, to get um, data from like uh, a sensor installed underground. Okay, Ben, can you go back one slide? Uh, yeah. Juan, do you, Juan, do you want to tell us a bit about this project oh, here? Um, yes, well, uh, thanks, Ben. I'm sorry. Mm, is, no, no, it's, uh, it's fine. So uh, it's clear that the, the, both the, the geodetic and geotechnical monitoring are complementary in this uh, type of projects. And for instance, uh, to monitor the deformation, it's clear that the total station has several advantages, but also sometimes it's not, there, there are some locations without line, direct line of sight with the total station, like the basements of the buildings, or also in the back wall of these uh, buildings. And it's possible to complement this deformation monitoring, you know, to monitor the, re the building response to the excavation with wireless team meters. And, and also, the, it's possible to to use the IoT technologies to automatically correct readings from the in-ground sensors that, to monitor the pore water pressure or to monitor the vertical or well, the horizontal displacement with an impacing clinometer. Uh, and also, uh, it's uh, the, there are other important parameters like the stress and strain of the of the supporting system, no, of the bracing that it's possible to be, it's possible to monitor attaching string gauges to these sensors, to these structural elements, or also with the use of load cells in the ground anchors. No? So all these systems are complementary and are providing the, the mix of the data collected by these different systems pro, provides a, a better data for further analysis. As you click in the next slide. Other example should be with uh, in mining with tiling dams. No? So it's clear that the deformation monitoring with uh, is one of the uh, essential uh, parts of the monitoring, and particularly it's frequently used the ENSS system to monitor the absolute displacement. Uh, in this case, in this uh, illustration, it should be with an automatic system, but sometimes it's also with manually collected data. And, and, and there are other, other parameters that play an important role in the stability on the, of the tailing dam uh, that can be, can be automatized using a, a wireless solution uh, as the uh, as you sensitive. Yeah? And in this case, if you click on, on the next one. So it's possible to it's possible to use load sensing to collect data from the pore water pressure also for to monitor the horizontal displacement with IPIs and some other parameters, no, like the weather with the rain, rain, rain gauges or weather stations, that all, all these parameters complement the, the surface deformation monitoring. You know? So sometimes the in-ground sensors that are installed in, in boreholes uh, can, can be used to monitor the, the cause of this uh, surface deformation that are uh, that is monitored with the geodetical monitoring solutions. You know? So finally, all, all these systems, it's important to monitor the surface deformation, and also it's important to understand well the the cause of these uh, of these uh, displacements. So an other example should be in the next one with uh, with uh, in also in mining with open pits. And slope stability. This is uh, also one example where both with geodetic and geotechnical monitoring uh, complementary. It's uh, quite frequent to use total stations to monitor the stability of some slopes in open pits. 
and at the same time in many in many open pits it's uh, it's quite useful to deploy a wireless solution to collect data from from some sensors also related to the slope stability uh, and also to monitor the, the watering you know that it's also uh, it's it, there is also a relation between the the pore water pressure and the stability of the slopes uh, and also just only to to monitor the the the, uh, to, to monitor the, the watering itself. So uh, here, this is an example from from Boliden, from well, ITIC mine in Sweden, where load sensing is currently deployed to collect data from multiple piezometers deployed uh, spread over the over this large open pit mine. Okay, and just uh, the. This complementary, the, this complementary solution between geodetic and geotechnical monitoring could also apply to other projects, no? like soil, soil consolidation projects, uh, including the land reclamation projects, where the pore water pressure is quite related to, to the settlement, no? and the use of the both techniques is it really complementary or also for tunnel monitoring, no? where it is possible to monitor the convergences with a total station, sometimes manually operated, and at the same time, it's possible to use the wireless the geotechnical nodes to collect data from the multiple morphole extensometers or uh, shot uh, pressure cells installed to monitor the effectiveness of the tunnel lining. No? So both systems are complementary, and sometimes also the use of uh, IoT technologies can also complement the, the deformation monitoring no? with la laser distance meters and with wireless meters. So now it's back to you, Ben. Yeah, thank you. So now I'm gonna present like how it is how easy it is to configure a geotech monitoring. Uh, today I want to show you how to configure a uh, a tilt meter so maybe i can quickly introduce like where we are today with uh, geodetic monitoring and when where we will be with uh, to do the comparison with uh, geotechnical monitoring so today i think now we have to split uh, our system in four different parts so you have the sensor the data logger the gateway and the processing part for the sensor today is it will be a, a total station for example the data logger and the gateway will be the setup M1. Basically with the data logger, you collect the data, you take the data from the sensor. And after like you, uh, you communicate with the gateway and the gateway will send the data to the processing part. So basically the setup M1 is our data logger and gateway. For GNSS, uh, it will be both because it collects the data. It takes the data from the antenna and then is able also to send the data to the server and process on T4D. For geotechnical sensor, it will be a little bit different. So you have like, you can have different sensor like piezometers, trend gauge, et cetera. And you communicate the, the information from the sensor to a data logger. Then the data logger will send the, the data through radio, LoRa protocol. So you have like a range around two to 15 kilometers, uh, as Kelly mentioned before. And the gateway job basically is just to collect the data from all your sensor on site and send it to the server. You can use like for this, you can use a Ethernet cable, you can use, um, you can use Wi-Fi or you can use 4G. Um, there is a different, uh, I think this is really great. This is uh, because, for example, I know there is few customer in the tunnel. They don't have internet sometimes. So we, through this gateway, you can just send the data from the data logger and you just need one point where you need into, where you ha where you have internet. You don't need to have internet all, all along the tunnel. And then, so this is uh, the last part. Uh, we have this, uh, connected sensor so basically it's like tilt meter so you are able to collect the angle for tilt meter in two direction in two axis or for the laser you get the for the tilt laser you get the distance and the tilt and then when you collect all you can send directly from the sensor to the gateway and so gateway to see through t4d how it works 
So this is what I explained uh, in the in the last graph. Uh, but I think here I just want to show you how to do. So it's basically it's like your, I will say your Bluetooth speaker at home. So you have like your TDCC 600, for example. You have a special you have a special cable, and you you can just like connect to your sensor. So it could be a data logger or a wireless sensor. And after you have to pair, you have to connect uh, through the LoRa, uh, the sensor to the gateway. Since it's connected, after you won't lose connection anymore. And then, uh, uh, and then you have like uh, uh, a pro you have like an address, so you you can connect through the web to the gateway, and you will see through the web all your sensor connected to this gateway. The range is between two to fifteen kilometers. Uh, you have different uh, different hey technology for, yeah, then sorry. Before you continue, there's a couple of questions I think it would be good to answer oh, regarding okay. how, it, how it works. Okay. So so one question was, do the sensors use cell, or can the sensors use cellular communication? No, uh, on all the sensors, you don't have cellular communication. It's uh, radio only. Uh, the only uh, sensor, I will say sensor, but the only uh, device who has uh, cellular communication is a gateway to communicate with the uh, outdoor world. All right, a couple other questions here before we, we keep going. Uh, so the other one was, can there be, or would there be any problems with radio frequencies um, with different country regulations? Yeah, so basically, uh, so you have two different, uh, this is a very good question actually. So you have two different options. Basically uh, for this sensor, like the wireless sensor or the data logger, you can change the frequency. But uh, the only uh, different uh, uh, device uh, you need, depend of the country, is a gateway. So for the gateway, for example, you are not able to change the frequency. So for, you cannot use the same gateway in Europe than in US or than in China. It's different. It's a different frequency. Perfect. And then one more question: uh, How do how does the the da the data flow work? Does the gateway call to the sensors to get data, or do the sensors automatically send that data to the gateway? So you have, a, so this is also a good question. Uh, I mean, it's the next step. Uh, I will show you during the demo, but I can explain very quickly right now. So basically through the gateway, you have a web application. So you can see the application and you are able to change, for example, the frequency rate. So the gateway will be able to send, I will say like a project to the, to the data logger or to the wireless sensor. And it can change the frequency, the data frequency acquisition. But uh, after, like, I don't think, uh, uh, so I think the, the question was just like, if you can change, if you can configure your sensor through the gateway, right? Uh, that's, that's part of it. The other part is how is the data transferred? And I think, I think the data is transferred. Oh, the sensor radio. sends, yeah, sends the rate, sends yeah. via radio to, to the gateway. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And you are also able to see in real time the data through the gateway from the sensor. Excellent. So now I just want to talk uh, very quickly about uh, the data logger. So data logger is three different technology. Basically is like a communication technology for the data logger with the sensor. Uh, you have, for example, vibration wires. So for vibration wires, for example, most of the sensor use uh, with this technology is like uh, is like crack meter, uh, it's piezometer. Uh, most of our, I will say customer right now, they use vibration wire. Uh, analog uh, is more like a temperature probe. Um, and uh, I don't have other example for analog, I think probably temperature probe, I see. Uh, and digital, uh, digital is interesting uh, because you can use with weather station. Uh, for example, I will show you uh, during my demo. I have a weather station right now connected to my to my digital uh, data logger. But you can also connect uh, in place inclinometer. It's like a sensor go underground, 
Um, and yeah, it's in place in Kilometer basically and with a station. So here is uh, all the sensors supported by uh, our uh, data logger. Uh, data logger is really good, it's really cool because it's really flexible. And uh, World Sensing is a very great provider because they are able to support more than 20 different brand of sensor. Uh, so you can almost support all this, all the sensor, uh, geotechnical sensor in the market. So you have like all these sensors supported. Uh, I don't know, I think the next page is a brand. So this is all the brand uh, supported uh, for geotechnical sensor. So uh, as you can see, there is a lot. And for each brand, there is a lot of different sensors. So yeah, for the wireless uh, sensor, uh, just talk, <clears throat> I think we, uh, we can focus on this uh, to start. Um, for people, I will, my advice for people who start a geotechnical sensor, I won't advise uh, to start directly with piezometer or IPA. I think uh, if you want to, uh, to first try, I will suggest to start first with uh, this wireless sensor, uh, like a tilt meter and a laser tilt. Uh, it's very easy to use. And I think for most of our, of our customer and user case, you can like you can use this so it's using a railway track monitoring this is what i mentioned at the beginning building response to tunnel excavation foundation and deep excavation landslide bridge and also embankment um, we have uh, a lot of uh, different i didn't add uh, maybe maybe in the next presentation i can add like a uh, another slide to talk about the different uh, support we have uh, we have a lot of support uh, provided by World Sensing uh, to uh, install like uh, in a flat way or if you want to put it on the floor or if you want if you want a bracket for example like this uh, there is a lot of different support to install it laser uh, all these support are compatible with laser and also with uh, with tilt meter so for laser, uh, it's uh, for laser tilt in this case. It's used. Uh, it, it is used in um, in a tunnel, uh, of course, to do like a tunnel convergence, uh, deformation under uh, in the underground, uh, remote monitoring for slope, uh, fracture and fault surveillance, uh, bearing expansion join, and monitoring displacement and also settlement. Um, it's very efficient. I think the range is around uh, 300 meters. So live, let's talk about the live demo. Um, so for to start a demo to configure your your tilt meter, you need uh, a TDC 600, the cable provided by World Sensing. So it's uh, is uh, you have two side. One is USB C, and the other side is a micro USB. You need uh, of course a tilt meter, uh, the support I already installed, hey and uh, I. Yeah, sorry. Are you are you sharing you have your question? webcam? Are you sharing your webcam? Or are you supposed to be okay, sharing sorry. your webcam? Because we can't see it if you are trying to share. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah. I. Oh, sorry. There you now go. I think there. it's okay. Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> much better. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you to remind. So you need like uh, this uh, the 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 TDC six hundred with the application installed. So the application called Trimble Geotech, uh, it will be available in our uh, our store pretty soon in our website. Uh, this is a cable. Uh, you have USB-C and mini, mini USB. You need a, a, tilt, a tilt sensor. Uh, it looks like this. Uh, I already installed the bracket and I install, so this is my own installation. Uh, I installed some magnets so it's basically very easy to install. You can just like magnet it on a on a on a on a steel, and it will work. Uh, you also need uh, a screwdriver uh, with um, with uh, this kind of screw, and uh, and basically you have to unscrew the device. This is only for for tilt meter. You have to unscrew. So I think I'm gonna open the box. I think so you can see what there is inside. Uh, this is very interesting also for our customers. So inside the box, there is, there is two battery. 
Um, so this is great. I know there is a lot of uh, geotech competitor. It's not possible to change the battery. Uh, but with World Sensing One, it's possible. Uh, this battery, you, it provides you around two years, uh, or two years to 15 years autonomy. Uh, so it's pretty long. Uh, it's, it's enough for, uh, for a project. And uh, inside, you also have like a USB cable. Basically, uh, they put it inside because you just need uh, to configure, to connect just for the configuration. You have like a small button uh, when you buy the sensor is connected to external power. But when you connect the battery, you have to turn uh, on the battery mode. It's just here. And uh, so let's connect my sensor to, uh, to the device, um, to, the, to the TDC 600. For the TDC 600, I already installed the application. Uh, so when I turn on, okay, when I turn on, basically, all the second, I, can I, do I share my screen right now? Yeah, you're still sharing. Uh, I hope. Okay. Uh, oh. So while you're doing that, so just every, uh, show, so everyone's aware, so the uh, the mobile application that Ben is going to show is an Android application, so it can be on any installed on any Android device. Um, the TDC 600 is a is a Trimble Android data collector. So if you happen to be using that, or for instance a, a TSC 5, you could use that as well. Okay. Okay. It seems I have some issues, so I can just like show you my screen. I don't know why. So basically, when you start, so it asks you directly uh, if which application you want to use. So here I uh, this this is like Trimble Geotech, and um, and then you have like uh, I don't know. You cannot see my screen. No, uh, it's quite hard so. to. So here I'll give you. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna try again. Uh, okay. Uh, While you're doing that, I don't know what's happened. It seems like take some questions. Yeah, you can so, take some question. It would be great. Sure. Yeah. Hey, Juan, maybe this is a good question. A good question for you. So for the for the wireless sensors, how long it does the battery last? So Ben was showing, for instance, in that tilt meter, there's two batteries. How long does that last? So in this case, uh, it depends on the battery life. Well, it depends on the frequency of acquisition. So one example with the five channel vibrating wire logger reading uh, up to five uh, vibrating wire sensors, sampling every hour, sampling and transmitting every hour, the battery will last after seven years. And the same logger connected to up to five vibrating wire sensors, sampling and transmitting every five minutes, the batteries will last after 2.2 years, not two, two years and one or two months. So, okay. and with the wireless steel meter, we can also, let me double check. So, yeah, I can Perfect. answer later. Yeah, yeah I think that's a, that gives everyone though a really good idea of the, the long, lasting battery life of the sensors all right ben it looks like we can see the uh the okay the, uh, yeah screen. perfect i'm i'm sorry like uh it so basically i just take uh the usb c so now it's connected to my tilt meter and when you connect automatically it asks you it runs the application so as you can see now uh, he asked me if I want to update the time. The time, so the time is already updated. So I, I'm gonna skip. And now uh, I have to set up my device. So to set up my device is very, uh, I will say, easy. Uh, I connect on. I go on setup. Uh, next. And now it detects automatically my position based on my internet connection. Um, so I don't think maybe I don't share my position right now. This is a problem. Okay. So here. Perfect. Next. 
I think I didn't share my, my position with, uh, with the application. Now I have to go on CMT. So this is great. Basically, this is great because you can select your position. For example, if you are at the office, you won't, don't want to do the configuration on site, you are able to select where you will install the sensor. And then the sensor is, will save this position. Uh, then you have to, to, uh, to uh, select the, the tr transfer mode. So for our case, it's always a CMT edge radio. Uh, and this is here where you have to choose your, the, which frequency you use. So here I'm based in France and my gateway is a French gateway, uh, not French, a European, sorry, <laughs> is a European gateway. So in this case, oh, okay. In this case, I have to, I have to use uh, Europe next, uh, maximum spreading factor. So here basically you keep in default mode. Uh, here you put the maximum of sensor. Maximum of sensor can be 500. Uh, in my case, I don't have a lot of sensor connected on my gateway, so I just put 25. Uh, take a sample. So I will take a measurement with my with my node. So we take a reading. Nice. So now you can see you have measurement on two different axes and you also have a temperature uh, probe on the sensor. So you're able to provide this temperature and you're also able to display on T4D. And here you define, uh, you will define the sampling rate. You want to take uh, the measurement. So it could be 10 minutes to four hour. I think you can even configure in, in, uh, in 24 hour. But if you want, you can reduce to 30 seconds to one minute. But as Juan mentioned before, if you do this, you will reduce the battery life. So this is important. It can reduce around, it could be three months if you decrease at 30 seconds. So I keep like the same. Uh, now I already configure, I'm not enter, I won't enter my password, of course, of my gateway, uh, but I already configure. Uh, so you have to enter your your ID of your gateway, so it's it's on the side, and uh, you have to enter the password provided by by the <clears throat> with the, when you buy the gateway, and you enter the password. Next, next it will try to authenticate uh, to the gateway, and uh, here there is a password. So I think I. I have like the password of my gateway. Uh, refresh. And then I can pass. Oh. Everyone knows okay, your next. passwords now. <laughs> I know, I will change my password after this demo, sorry. <laughs> so now you check like the connection of like my sensor uh, with a gateway. And uh, it can take a while. So I think like we can, uh, it can take around like five minutes. So maybe we can pick some question if someone have question right now. Yeah, there's a lot of really right, eh? good questions. Thank you everyone for, for everyone good. who's asked questions. There's quite a few that have come in. So uh, a really good one. I think I'll let Juan answer this one, but it came in from Gavin about, so the question is, do the sensors have an optional ethernet and or serial output? So we have the option to connect into existing radio mesh networks at site, or are we limited to the, to the radios that the devices have? Yeah, well, in, in this case, the, the, the gateway has an Ethernet port, and it, this is quite useful because you it provides some flexibility in terms of uh, connecting to a Wi-Fi point-to-point -point or uh, to other wireless uh, solutions for to provide like a satellite modem. And, uh, and regarding the nodes, uh, the, the wireless data loggers and the wireless sensors, they transmit using long-range radio. And, and in this case, uh, there is one digital logger and in the, this digital logger is able to, 
to collect readings from from change of digital sensors, particularly in placing kilometers, but also others like weather weather trans weather transmitters from Vaisala or or and also it's uh, it's uh, it is possible to connect uh, Modbus RTU sensors. There is a list of all uh, of all the digital sensors that are that uh, are integrated and can be read using the digital logger and, and this list it's, uh, is growing every month. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, ben, do you, do you want us to take some more or are you ready to keep going? No, uh, maybe you can pick like during you take the question, I just like close the tilt meter just to let you know. And uh, and after we're gonna install it, and I'm gonna show you how to configure. So Excellent. you can pick some question now, and I sure I so, will screw the, the tilt meter. Sounds good. So Thomas asked, do you use any kind of GNSS correction when you're measuring the position of the sensor? Juan, do you wanna? Uh, that? So you have for ben. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, well, we did. Well, uh, I, I so you have two different. Up. Up. Go go. <laughs> Just some yeah, you, can, you can answer if you want one. Well, no. <laughs> the, the point is that uh, with um, the, the gateway has a GNSS antenna, and it um, it's useful to to take the position of the of the gateway. But for for the other loggers, and particularly for the wireless sensors, uh, the wireless tilmeter and the laser antimeter. Uh, in this case, sometimes it's good to to complement the measurements with periodic uh, with periodic surveying, no? Because uh, you are with the laser distance meter, you are monitoring the relative distance between pairs of points. If you want to to convert to the absolute displacements, you you will need to go with the total station every two weeks or whatever, no? Just to to take a position of these points, no? So sometimes. It's quite frequent to even use some kind of targets uh, stickers on the on these kind of wireless sensors to complement both systems. No? And also, when reading in ground sensors like multipoint borehole extensometers, leveling the head of the multipoint borehole extensometer is quite useful. No, because uh, and also with the inclinometers, you know, with the inclinometers, because typically you are with inclinometer, you are obtaining the the deformation profile of your of your borehole. Uh, considering that the that the bottom of the casing is in a fixed position, but sometimes this is not uh, a proper assumption. No, so yeah, you need to correct with surveying techniques. Excellent, thank you, Juan. All right, Ben, what are you, what are you showing us? Looks like there's some delay. We might be losing Ben. He's got too many, too many things connected. <laughs> Give him some time to come back. All right. Well, while that's happening, there was a few questions asked about the um, the mobile application that Benjamin was showing. So that that app will will eventually be available on the Trimble Monitoring website, uh, hopefully quite soon the uh the uh, app itself is an android app so it's not supported on ios but only android so any android device you have you can install that and you will be able to use it um, and it does the other, another question came in about the app about working offline and yes you can use the android app offline as well okay cool so i think hey, i can see you again i i have an issue with the wi-fi so yeah, we're all good. Uh, i mean now now is great. So I think I installed the tilt meter. Uh, I don't know if you have time to see it. I just install on this side. Um, I cannot move my computer, unfortunately. So I have a, a priest target on the side and uh, I have like a two total station running and they shoot the target. So I, I do like a real time monitoring. Uh, so I will have like orientation and also position. Uh, now, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, I hope. Can you see uh, my screen, yeah. Riley? Yep, yep, we can still okay, see Okay, so now I'm going to connect on my gateway. Uh, so basically, you just have to enter load sensing uh, and the serial number. 
And uh, when you select here, you can see directly, this is what I mentioned before, you can see directly all the sensor connected to through this gateway. So right now we have one piezometer, uh, one crack meter, one thermometer, so thermometer, the one thermometer, one two tilt meter, one weather station. So the weather station is just, just here, uh, and uh, and one laser. So for example, if I select the weather station, uh, I can see directly the data in real time uh, got by the by the data logger uh, through the gateway. Here the connection is on the gateway side. If I select my tilt meter, I configure the tilt meter one, I think. So as you can see, I have like uh, the, the two axes I measure. And if I go on tilt meter two, I have also these two axes. So let's configure a tilt meter. I'm going to show you how to do. So here you have the value, the default value. Uh, the, the, it means like the, the real value you measure. Now you have to configure the offset. For example, I can say like this tilt meter I install now. This is the zero value. And now I want to monitor since now what will be the orientation. So I, I select like this wheel. I configure, I have to use engineering units, angle vari variation. And here is the offset I will apply to the data. So you don't apply the offset on T4D, you will apply the offset directly on the on the um, on the gateway side and now i save it so as you can see the delta a and the delta b right now is zero it means it's my reference it's my reference measurement so now it's configured basically now we have to go on my on the t4d side uh, so we have a, a very nice website uh, on in NAND, um, and we have to configure your your sensor. So you have to go on projects, and on project side, you have uh, three different parts. You have home, project manager, and geotech gateway. Select geotech gateway, and then you have to add your own gateway. So for an, your own gateway, you select the different uh, brand of gateway. So there is word sensing, uh, so there is word sensing local network. If your gateway is not connected to internet, but is connected to your computer, and there is sensitive web monitor. Here is word sensing, because we we are connected on internet. Then you select. You have to give a name to your gateway. So this one I will call like uh, seventy five. And uh, here is a idea of your gateway. I call 75, but I can call like gateway one or whatever. Here is a login and password. It doesn't work, so I have to enter manually. Uh, hold a second. I'm sorry. I have too many passwords uh, to remember. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is because it's very safe. <laughs> and now I add my gateway is added. So as you can see, the gateway uh, 22, 375 is added. And I can collect directly everything into in the gateway. So now connected, I have one tilt, I have two tilt meter and one laser. Now I have to select this three sensor. So if you want, you can add here, you can add a coordinate. Uh, so this is what I think uh, it was a previous question. So there is two different options. If you want, when you configure your, your sensor, it will get the position, or you can enter manually on the interface of your TDC 600. But if you want to be more accurate where you install the gateway, you can use like a GNSS, for example, and you measure like with Trimble Access, uh, all your point and you enter directly the north, east and elevation coordinate. And uh, it will convert directly in degree, minute, second. And after you will be able to see it on, uh, on, uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the map. So here I select everything. I didn't enter coordinate in this case. So it will be random probably uh, uh, in, a, 
in the middle of the earth, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. So now I import the data on T4D. So I do I'm sure to import it, the free sensor. And now he imports the free data, the free sensor, sorry, on T4D. Now let's come back to home. So in a home environment, uh, we can go on, on map. And as I told you, because I didn't put any uh, any uh, any sensor, you see, you can see my laser tilt meter and, uh, and my two tilt meter. Uh, now I don't have any data because I just configure. So the monitoring will start right now. So it's normal, I don't have data. Then we can go, for example, on the view. So in this, uh, in this demo site, we have a camera view. So as you can see, uh, you can see me. <laughs> and uh, you are able to import directly uh, through the video stream, your sensor. So you go on sensor select and you go on your tilt meter one. And for example, I didn't install here, but I'm able to add my tilt meter just here. And uh, you see, you have your value uh, in uh, uh, in on like it's a life. So if you want, if you're not happy, you can delete. You can delete it, it. and uh, and uh, we can go on another custom view if we want, and put uh, in another custom view if it's a mistake. Um, just going to the chart. Uh, so I make some composite view uh, about, for example, the temperature. Uh, so you are able, oh, I think there is a, an issue with my, with the, the screen, but you are able to see both weather station, tilt meter, and all your sensor temperature directly on, uh, on the interface. And, uh, if you want, if we want to go to the tilt, we also able to see like the tilt displacement. So here it was not configured, uh, it was not well configured, but I also create like a analysis chart. And uh, I think it will be probably better to see the temperature here. So as you can see, uh, during the day is pretty warm uh, in Nantes, uh, in France. And uh, I also configure a tilt meter just here. So I configure the roll and the pitch. And you should be able to see like uh, the, the delta displacement. So here I didn't configure the delta. So it's kind of far from zero, but if you configure well, as I show you with the engineering unit, you will be able to see like the dip displacement after your baseline. So it starts at zero and after uh, it will, the value will change during the project. So, and then after like uh, just to show you, I think, I don't know if like uh, basically people show this, you are able to create alarm also on the, on the displacement angle and it will send an alert by email to your client or to you, and you can define different level of alert based on the on the angle or distance if you use laser tilt. So now I think we can go to the question, uh, or if people want uh, want I demonstrate more uh, more stuff, it would be great. Yeah. yeah. So the, there's quite a few questions. Uh, I like this one from Kevin. Is there a radio repeater available for areas where radio communication is difficult for the gateway? So, so I guess if you have, no. you know, hills and valleys. You install and another gateway. Distances. You install another gateway. So basically the gateway is not uh, very expensive. So what we advise to our customer is to install uh, multiple gateway. For example, if you have like, I will say 70 kilometer project is better to install like one gateway on one job site, another gateway on one job on another job site. And if you want, you can install at the middle. So you will have like free, uh, if you go for example on project, you will have your free gateway. You can configure like as many gateway as you want. Excellent. All right, so Liam asked a question for you, Ben, about uh, you're showing T4D right now. Is it a virtual server-based install of T4D? And if so, are what are, are we looking at the full version of T4D or are we looking at the geotech version? Oh, uh, we are, uh, great question. So we are looking at the full version of T4D because uh, as you can see, uh, I have like also a total station uh, data and GNSS. So for example, if you go on GNSS, I have GNSS data. So this is a full version. Perfect. 
All right, and uh, Debesh asked a question about alarming. Can an alarm be sent by SMS or a audible siren? Uh, yes, it is. It's possible. We can okay. send by email, SMS, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I don't remember what is the last one. Excellent. Uh, this is another good question from Robert uh, regarding calculations in T4D. Are we able to combine mm -hmm. or combine in one calculation different sensors, for example, uh, a tilt and survey distance all together in a variable calculation? Mm. What do you mean? Do you mean like um, basically with the tilt you will have like uh, an orientation? And uh, oh, you mean like you install two different uh, prism and you install in a tilt, for example, at the middle, and Correct. you compare the two vector. Okay, uh, I never think about this. Maybe it's possible. Uh, I have to check uh, for this. I will check. I will check, and we'll come back to you. I think it's possible, but I, I would prefer to check instead of like saying it's possible and it's not. Sounds good. Great question, Robert. And just looking through the list. Thanks again, everyone, for for great questions. There was there was a lot, so I apologize if we didn't ask answer all of them. Um, but we'll leave a few more minutes if there is other questions that anyone would like to ask. Uh, maybe what I can add also is like uh, right now we also have um, um, the gateway is possible to connect directly from uh, to the solar panel. So here, my installation, I think for people who used to come here uh, in my, uh, I will say, uh, playing area uh, on a non on triple nut roof, uh, all my installation here is solar. Everything is installed on solar panel and is fully autonomous. Very cool. All right. So do you have more questions, Riley? I don't see any new ones. Uh, Juan, do you see any other questions that you think would be good to answer? I think we got most of them. So it's great. This means like this time I was pretty clear. I mean, it's very easy. Uh, basically, right now, uh, I think I was thinking about uh, making like a five minute challenge. So it's like a five minute <laughs> to set up one tilt meter. <laughs> Maybe we can think about it. It's a good idea. I like it. And we offer one tilt meter if you do this. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, Liam said you can do it faster than five minutes. <laughs> I think so. Oh, I think so. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's a couple questions. Uh, so Don asked about the ac what is the accuracy of the tilt meter. Um, so basically, for tilt meter, we don't talk about accuracy. Uh, I think this is this is what people basically think in monitoring. They always talk about accuracy. We talk about repeatability, and repeatability. Uh, this is the most important point. Is around 0 0.000. Uh, I think it's three zero twenty five or four zero. I'm not sure. Oh, I think over, one over can degree. help. Is, yeah. is it? Yeah, over a degree, of course. I think it's three zero uh, twenty five. One, I think you, you might be smart. In yet? No, still mute. Still, still on mute. Double <laughs> <laughs> mute. Uh, the all, all our wireless steel meters are calibrated in a rotary table. So in this case, it, it will also be possible to to talk about accuracy. The repeatability is better than 0 0.2 milli-degrees, no? So, yeah, and I think that the important point, in terms of accuracy, within five degrees range is three milli-degrees. Then there is a thermal temperature dependency of, of two milli-degrees per Celsius, but I think that it's a, it's a, it's a good point just to, to note that these steel meters, each unit is, is calibrated in a rotary table. Mm -hmm. Great yeah. question. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so so another question, this is just good information for everyone to know. It's a question about will this webinar be available? So anyone who signed up will receive an email uh, this week with the recording of the webinar. So, so they'll have access to it. It's also going to be available on the geospatial.trimble.com website for anyone else. So if any of your colleagues want to watch it, you'll be able to find that recording available there probably within a day. And uh, also attached to this, this presentation in the handout section, you can find the slide presentations that, or slide, um, yeah, the slides that we presented today. So feel free to download those if you want more information. Oh, I think there's a lot of good question I see. Uh, Amory, yeah. uh, so is it possible to connect to the LoRa network of public phone? Uh, no, it's not possible. So basically you just connect, uh, you can connect uh, to the, the access point of the gateway if you want. So there is a Wi-Fi access point, so you will be able to connect to the access point, but you cannot connect to LoRa with your phone. There is no LoRa sensor right now available. I am uh, uh, in case of communication outrage. Yeah, I yeah I don't see uh, I don't see other question. Yeah, the most important I think is the battery. Uh, the battery uh, life is really uh, is really long. is around uh, 15 years. Uh, 15 years if you consider like getting data every uh, every uh, every uh, hours or two hours. And it could be two years if you do like every five minutes. Um, the very, I think the takeaway point is like battery or removable. Uh, you don't need, uh, if you're, if you're, we, uh, Trimble, we offer four years warranty uh, for free. And also uh, the, if you have like, for example, uh, need to uh, change the battery, you don't need to send it back to Trimble or World Sensing you will be able to do it by yourself, just buying the battery, replace it and reinstall. So basically when you have this sensor, is basically you can use it for like many years. There is no problem. It's a very good investment my, in my point of view. Yeah, so we're, we're over time. So let's just take, let's take two more, let's say two more questions and then we'll end the webinar so everybody can get on with their day. So I thought this was a good question about, um, Another one from Don. If the tilt meter moves from its original position, can a secondary movement be measured from the first position to get an overall movement distance, or does it the tilt meter reset to zero? Uh, no, the tilt meter doesn't reset to zero uh, since you uh, you don't reconfigure the engineering unit. So basically, if like you have movement, for example, five degree. If you don't uh, reset to zero, what I put in the engineering uh, degree, the value I put, it won't reset, reset to zero. But I think uh, when you go on engineering uh, units, I think you have to be very careful because uh, since it's configured, if you don't remember the number was before, uh, it's, you, you lose it. You won't able to get it back. Maybe what you can do is you can apply the, the last offset to get almost the same values than before. This is possible. Excellent. And uh, Mikael asked a question about vibration resistance of the sensors. So for example, if you have a tilt meter uh, installed on, on a rail track where, where there's constant vibration from the moving of cargo on the, the track, Maybe Juan, maybe you can answer that question. Yes, uh, with the telemeter, the, we, we, there is one version with an internal antenna that is properly designed for, for railway monitoring. And uh, well, the, the wireless telemeter has been tested according to a uh, standard test for, uh, for the railroad profile vibration, uh, on a, considering that it's installed on a sleeper. And the results were were good, no? so it passed this test. And also, we have a very good uh, track record of many of hundreds of kilometers, even thousands installed on railways, and uh, with very good results. No? So the vibration resistance of the wireless meter is quite good. Excellent. But what what we have to just uh, I just want to add something. 
more uh, more frequency, higher the frequency will be, the data acquisition frequency will be, less sensor you will be able to to, uh, to get in one gateway. For example, if you put 30 seconds, it will reduce the number of sensor you will have uh, in one gateway. Excellent. Well, let's, uh, we're 10 minutes over time, but I think that's good because we got a lot of questions. So I, I hope this was really beneficial for all of you that attended. I want to say thanks to Juan.com site so you can go on and see T40 in action. Yeah, webinar, no, I'm doing.